Hey everybody, this is Mr. Webb, and today's video is about hummingbirds. There are 320 species of hummingbirds in the Americas, but there's only one that you usually see in Illinois, and that is the ruby-throated hummingbird. These hummingbirds you may see flying around are iridescent green with some white on their chest. That is the females, but the males have red right around their neck, and that is how they got their name, it is like the color ruby. Um, actually, cool thing is when you see in different light, it can change colors, so it may not may look purple, it may look yellowish, but majority of the time, when the light hits it just right, it is ruby red. They usually start to show up in Illinois, in our area, around April. The males show up two weeks before the females and the juveniles to kind of stake out their feeding grounds and what area they want to hang out at, and they actually leave two weeks before them in the fall. But they're here in the summer because they're a migratory bird, so they come up here to breed and nest and have babies and then they head back south for the winter. When they head back south for the winter, they fly around 2,000 miles all the way to southern Mexico and Central America. So you may see a hummingbird in your yard that will be all the way down in southern Mexico or Central America by the middle of winter before they come all the way back up here. A cool fact, when they fly south, they fly all the way across the Gulf of Mexico. It's like 500 miles nonstop and it takes them 18 22 hours to get there. So there's that's a long way for a little bitty bird, but they do it every year. In their breeding grounds, the females will build nests that are about the size of a thimble. So you could st barely probably stick your thumb just inside the nest, which is very small. And when they lay their eggs, they lay them in that tiny nest. And when the babies hatch, they are only about the size of a penny, but they can be flying on their own within 20 days. So they're super, super small, but it doesn't take long for them to leave the nest. The males, uh, they don't stay with the females for very long. They meet up and they hang out for, you know, maybe a couple days or a couple weeks and then they go on their way. So it's not like geese where they, they live their whole life together. They show up, they mate, and the males go on and do their own thing and the females hang out with the eggs and hatch the babies and then they go on. A cool thing about the nests, when they do make them, they use grass and different kind of foliage to make it, but they hold it together with spider webs. So they kind of put it together, wrap some web around it to hold it together, and they put some more on the outside, and that's how it stays together. Most hummingbirds die within their first year of life. Um, the average ruby-throated hummingbird lives probably three to three and a half years a lot of them don't make it past a year. The longest known living ruby-throated hummingbird is nine years and one month. If you hear hummingbird, a lot of times you hear their wings, but they actually make a, a little squeaking noise like a mouse. So if you hear a little peep, that's them calling each other. The ruby-throated hummingbirds are the smallest species of hummingbirds. They don't get past about three and a half inches and they weigh about the weight of three grapes. So you could put three grapes in your hand. That's about how much a hummingbird would weigh. So they're super tiny. Even though they are super tiny, they're really, really fast. They can fly 25 miles per hour straight. And then as they make a dive motion, they can travel up to 40 miles per hour. So that's super fast for a little bird. Their wings can flap up to 53 times per, per second. Almost said per minute, but per second. So like one and 53 times by the time I snap my fingers. Super fast. So they're very fast, they're very agile, and they can even fly backwards. We know that they eat nectar and they hang out around hummingbird feeders all the time in people's yard, as you can see where I was videoing, but they don't just eat nectar. They eat insects as well. So they hang out on tree branches and if they see an insect fly by, they just go snatch it out of the air. So they're pretty fast and they're kind of like tiny little predators that eat insects, it's pretty neat. They don't live very long like we talked about a while ago, but they do have predators other than just not living very long. They, frogs can even eat them, lizards, because they're so small, and a lot of times predatory birds, so bigger birds may eat hummingbirds, if they can catch them, because they're pretty fast. And I saw on the internet that even praying mantises, there was a picture of a praying mantis that had caught one. So they're small, so it'd be easy for something to get them. 
Uh, squirrels and chipmunks, I think it said crows, even uh, might eat their eggs. So if they get a hold of their nest, the eggs might not even hatch. One of the coolest things, other than being super fast about a hummingbird, is their bill. So like their beak, it's super long and narrow. It looks like a straw. So you would think they just stick their beak in the little hole and they suck the nectar out. But actually, they use their tongue. They don't just suck, they use their tongue and they stick it in there and it has like little hair on the tongue and it helps pull out nectar. So in this video here, you can see that the hummingbird is sticking its tongue out. So when it puts its mouth in the little hole, it uses its tongue, kind of like a cat drinks water or a dog drinks water. It uses its tongue to stick in there and pull out the nectar. Also, when you look at their bills, they look like a needle, like it would stab you in the eye. But it actually is flexible. You can move it around a little bit. I had to catch a hummingbird in my uncle's house one time and I was super gentle with it, so I let him go. But when I caught him, I thought, oh no, he's gonna poke me, but it's actually kind of soft. So it's not as hard as it looks. They uh, are soft and they flex a little bit. So it's pretty neat. Uh, looks can be deceiving, but they it's not a straw and it's flexible. So if you see a hummingbird in the next week or two before they head back south, just know that that hummingbird will probably fly all the way over the Gulf of Mexico and be in Mexico or Central America by December. So they have a long way to go, kind of give them a wave and send them on their way, but it's pretty neat. They fly a long way for such a small bird. Uh, see you guys next week and don't forget to hit subscribe. For more information, just Google hummingbirds in the ruby throated hummingbird. There were so many different sites that had cool things about hummingbirds on there, but I'm going to show you some cool videos that I've got here at the end, so check it out. I will see you next week. Oh,